So the rumors are true, Sora is here. The incredible text-to-video product from OpenAI that was first announced so many months ago and we've been waiting patiently for it. Yes, it is here. And it's so much more than just a text-to-video model. It is a full AI editing suite and it is absolutely insane. The wait was worth it, I got access, so I'm gonna tell you all about it and then I'm gonna test it out and show you what I make. And let me show you some of the incredible generations before we get into the video. Here is one of dancing rainforest frogs. Here's one of a robot solving a Rubik's cube. Here's one of a cat sitting in a garden. I mean, this looks flawless. Here's one of a chicken using a fisheye lens in front of a house. I mean, I really, if I just saw this briefly, would not be able to tell the difference that this was actually completely AI generated. So as I mentioned, this is so much more than just text to video. It has a bunch of features built into this model that allow you to do things like remix what you've already created, add new frames to the end of a video, and so much more. So let me show you a little bit about it. So the first feature I wanna show you is remix. Replace, remove, or reimagine elements in your video with remix. So here's open large doors into the library. There we go. And then replace doors with French doors turn the library into a spaceship. So you basically have the same video, but you can reskin it, for example. Next, we have recut. Find and isolate the best frames, extending them in either direction to complete a scene. So like I said, very much an editing studio. And at the very end of the live stream, the creators of Sora said, if you're expecting to go in here and just type out a prompt and get a full feature film from it, your expectations are wrong. This is a tool for creators. So this is recut, here's the original, and then you could extend before, so you can add some video before the original and extend after, which adds video after the original. Now I wanna show you the part of the live stream where they show off the feature recut, so let's take a look. So I'm gonna go ahead and use another editing tool here called recut that allows me to take my video, trim it down, and extend it in a storyboard with even more direction. So clicking recut has taken me into a new storyboard and Sora has imported this video of the crane and now I can see on the timeline my video here, I can scrub through it to review it and I can also trim my video. So I think I like, actually I'm gonna take this uh, first few seconds right until it's. So anybody familiar with QuickTime or DaVinci or Premiere, this should all feel very familiar, and I find that very interesting because they're not outsourcing the actual video editing part of the product. They are actually building it directly into Sora. And by the way, it's all at Sora.com, S-O-R-A.com. So completely different from ChatGPT. Head splashes into the water, I like that. And so much like in the other storyboard examples, any area that I leave empty here, Sora will seamlessly continue from whatever storyboard card I have in there. So if I want an entirely new ending, I can leave the end blank and I can go ahead and hit create. If I want an entirely new beginning, let's say I wanted this at the end of my scene, I can leave this here and maybe it will, the camera will stay on the crane for a little bit more in the beginning. So that is the feature. You basically can remove a piece of the video and then have it regenerate and it flows naturally into the original part of the video. I can also move it into the middle and generate entirely new endings and beginnings for all of my videos. And much like the rest of the storyboard, I can always click to add more cards and give it more a direction. And so that's how that feature works. Then you have something called storyboard, which allows you to scene by scene, have different prompts for each scene, and then it'll create video with a story to it. Again, very much like an editing studio, except everything is AI generated. It is pretty incredible. So here, a vast red landscape from zero to 114 frames. Then number two, looking out from inside the spaceship from 114 to 324. Then finally, from 324 to 440, detailed close-up view of an astronaut's eyes framed by a knitted fabric mask. Okay, let me play a little clip from the live stream from today that shows off what storyboard actually looks like because it is really cool. Today we're excited to talk about an entirely new creative tool that we're introducing, a more advanced tool that's still very early, but something we're calling storyboard that lets you direct a video with multiple actions across the sequence using a familiar timeline. So I'll click in right here and I'll tell you a little bit about storyboard. At the top of the screen, you see the storyboard cards. This is where you'll describe the environment, the characters, and the actions you want to occur 
at a particular point in your video. Below that is the timeline. You can see the outline of my entire clip, and this is where I'll sequence the actions in my video. And then below that is the creation settings that Rohan just went over. So I'll pop back up to the storyboard, and I'll set my first uh, storyboard card in the scene. So I'll say, a beautiful white crane stands in a creek. Let's give it a yellow tail. It stands in a creek. So here, I can write as little or as much as I want. And the less I write, the more Sora will fill in the details. And the more I write, the more Sora will try to adhere to my direction. So in this video, I want this crane to be standing at the beginning and then dip its head in the water and pick out a fish. So I'll come down to my timeline and I can click anywhere within the outline of my clip to add an additional card and give Sora those actions. So I'll come up here and I'll say, the crane dips its head into the water and pulls out a fish. So looking back at my timeline, I can now see at the start of my timeline, I've set the scene, and then at five seconds, the crane will dip its head into the water. And you'll notice that there's space between these two cards within the outline of my clip. That space is important for Sora to connect this first set of actions with the second set of actions. I can always adjust where I want these actions to occur, but giving Sora adequate time to connect these ideas is really important if you want a continuous shot. You can also have it make cinematic cuts by moving them closer, or move them further away and let Sora do even more filling in of the details. So I'll move this back to five seconds and I'll fire it off. All right, and then it gets generated. Let's take a look at what that crane pulling fish out of the water actually looks like now. Pop into one of these and we can see. All right, so we see about halfway through, my crane is dipping its head into the water. You can see if it grabs a fish. Oh, looks like it missed on that one. Can review another one of these too. But you see that Sora has taken my direction and it's done a pretty good job at understanding exactly where it wants to go. And both of these cranes, they may have missed it the fish. got a little fish that one. Yeah, though. I got a little <laughs> fish. Um, but this is again, something I want to point out, which half of the, half of the story with Sora is taking a video, editing it and building on top of it. And then next is a feature called loop. So loop allows you to essentially kind of loop a video, exactly what it sounds like, but it will create it in a way that the beginning and the end loop together in a really nice, well, loop. So here's an example, here's a fire and it just loops back around. So it's just a consistent loop. So I think these types of video are gonna be very popular on like TikTok and Instagram, anything where it loops back around automatically. Here's a flower blooming. And then as you're gonna see at the end of the video, it withers and goes back in and then blooms again. Here's a staircase. Very trippy, very cool. And here's a wave, an infinite wave essentially. Next we have blend. So you have two different videos and you can actually blend the concepts together into one. So on the left, we see snowflakes. On the right, we see falling flower petals. And in the middle, we have the blend of the two. Here we have story presets. So you can kind of think of it like a prompt library that you can reuse. So if you have a certain style that you really like, you can go ahead and save it as a preset and then use it for future videos so you can make it kind of consistent theme throughout your videos. All right, so let's talk about pricing. It was actually more generous than I thought it would be. Unfortunately, it's not for any free users yet and I bet it will be soon. It's not available in Europe and a couple other countries as well and they don't have any firm timelines but they did say that they are trying their hardest. For ChatGPT Plus users, so that's $20 a month, a lot of people have that. You get 50 priority videos per day up to 720p resolution with five second duration. And I think that's pretty good. Obviously, if you're a free user, you can watch all of the videos, but that's not quite the same. Now for ChatGPT Pro, that plan, which is $200 a month, is starting to actually make more sense. Now, when they first announced it, they had O1 Pro, which is their top tier model, does a lot of thinking, and you get unlimited generations with it. Now, you get unlimited generations with Sora as well as part of that $200 a month. So that $200 a month is really starting to look good. 
And let me just pause for a second and say this. OpenAI has truly delivered in December. And it's only like the third day of the 12 days of OpenAI. It's pretty insane that they're still going to have nine days left of announcements. And they already released O1 Pro and Sora. Absolutely stunning. And you probably noticed I got a new office. So welcome to the new office. Let me know what you think I should add in the background. All right. So for ChatGPT Pro users, you get get unlimited generations and the highest resolution for high volume workloads, 500 priority videos. Now, when they say priority videos, that just means that you're going to get them more quickly. Unlimited relaxed videos, they don't call it slow or deprioritized. So that just means you might wait a little bit longer. You get 1080p resolution and 20 second duration with five concurrent generations and you can download it without the watermarks, which is kind of nice. All right, so enough talk. Let's play around with it. So this is the interface. It was extremely slow to sign up. I bet their servers are getting absolutely hammered. Now, in the interface, you basically get this unlimited scroll with other people's generations. And I mean, these things are absolutely gorgeous. These videos are stunning. Look at this one. Look how good the quality is. All right, so actually my first generation, there was an error and this is just minutes after the announcement. So I bet the servers are just getting absolutely hammered, but let me show you how it works. So describe your video. So astronaut playing on a computer sitting on the moon, and here you can click aspect ratio and change the aspect ratio. We're gonna keep it at 16 by nine. Here you can change the resolution. So eight times slower. I'm going to keep it at 480 for now because I just want to get it done and see what it looks like. I'll be posting other video generations on my Twitter. So if you don't follow me at Matthew Berman, please do. Here you can change the duration. So here we go. So I'm going to keep it at five seconds just for now. And you can generate multiple variations of the same prompt automatically. So here's one video, two videos or four videos. Now here are those presets that I mentioned. So balloon world, stop motion, and you can create any presets that you want. And then here's storyboard. So if I click generate storyboard, here's the storyboard. So it actually extended my prompt. So astronaut in a white space suit sits comfortably on the dusty surface of the moon. The earth looms large in the black sky above. Then look at this, it automatically did it. Second, the astronaut leans forward, focused and engaged in the computer game with fingers tapping the keyboard. Okay, so I'm just gonna do these two things and then click create. Let's see what it does. So it says added to queue and you can see the queue running right here. So the first generation failed. Let's see if this one works. So if I click into it, I can see them still generating. Now, all of those features that I mentioned Sora can do are all located right here. And then after the video gets generated, that's when I can play around with those. But for now, let me click back to the homepage while that's generating. Here are some of the videos that other people have created. So I really like this one. Let's click into it. And of course, because these are all public for now, you could actually do anything you want with these as well. So here's recut, remix, blend, and loop. So I'm gonna click remix. Okay, so there we go. The remix of Toyota 86 Night Drift. And what I'm gonna say is make all the cars Lego. And you can actually choose the strength of the remix. So strong, mild, subtle, and custom. I'm gonna do a strong remix and go ahead and remix it. Now I have two things in the queue. So while we wait, anybody in Hollywood who thought AI video was not going to drastically change the face of video creativity, obviously you were very wrong. This is the worst it will ever be, and it is stunning already. Imagine if you had unlimited compute and you can create really long videos. And you could use that storyboard feature to put together different scenes and make compelling videos. And then you use 11 labs to get some audio in there. And it's just all really cool. I'm so happy to be playing around with this finally. Okay, I couldn't get one of the videos working, but I just got this Lego video working. So let's take a look. All right, here is the original, I believe on the right side. And then here is my Lego version. It's not a huge change, but I could definitely see it looks a little bit more like a Lego. And yeah, so all the cars look a little different. I wouldn't say it's a drastic change though. It's kind of interesting because I did a strong remix, but the other videos that I've been trying just have failed, unfortunately. So I'm going to keep posting the videos that I create on Twitter. Definitely follow me there. All right, so that's it for this. Let me know what you think. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.